Good morning everyone. Uh, UN Mehta Institute of Cardiology and Research Center is organizing weekly academic session for continuous cardiac education. Uh, today's topic of discussion is uh, basics of cardiopulmonary bypass which would be taken up by Dr. Ramesh Patel sir who is professor and head in department of cardiac anesthesia at UN Mehta Institute of Cardiology and Research Center. Uh, he has a 22 years of teaching experience. Hello everyone, good morning to all. Uh, I am Dr. Ramesh, uh, Professor of Cardiac Anesthesia at UN Mehta Hospital, Ahmedabad. We will uh, discuss in brief about the basics of uh, cardiopulmonary bypass. In cardiac surgery, we all know that we need a bloodless and motionless uh, field to work peacefully. So, uh, the whole, uh, whole flow, whole volume of the blood in the body will flow temporarily diverted to an extra corporeal circuit that is functionally replaces the uh, function of the heart as well as lung. <coughs> in 1895, the Jacob observed that uh, guillotine head of a uh, dog survive for a uh, few hours if it is uh, perfused with oxygenated blood of other dog's lung. So, uh, this is very very important of uh, that uh, uh, guillotine head of a uh, dog when perfused with carotid artery, it is uh, survived for few hours. In 1930, Dr. Uh, Gibbon, he was on duty in Massachusetts General Hospital. He observed that a patient died in front of him because of massive pulmonary embolism. So, this is the event when uh, gave the bar, uh, birth of the idea that uh, that should be ma a machine which can function, take over the function of heart as well as lung. So, uh, such type of patient can be saved. In 1945, uh, Thomas Watson, he was the chief of the IBM company. He involved some engineers from IBM to develop a uh, heart-lung machine. Uh, we can see the photographs of heart-lung machines. Uh, it was used previously. It is quite big in size and as well as uh, quite co uh, complicated to assemble. In 1952, Dr. John Gibbon first operated a case of atrial defect, but unfortunately the patient was died and in autopsy it was found that patient had a, a huge PDA. And after that, in 1953, May 6, he operated another case of ASD. Uh, unfortunately, the patient is survived. Uh, the, he used the uh, cardiopulmonary bypass machine. And after that, John Kirkling also involved in the development of cardiopulmonary bypass machine and uh, the machine is called Mayo Gibbon Pump. It is called Mayo Gibbon Pump. And nowadays, this is the picture of uh, CPB machine that we are, used, we are using uh, nowadays. It is quite compatible, sensitive and uh, uh, cooperated with uh, advanced monitoring system. She is the first perfusionist, Mayo Gibbon. I will discuss in brief about pathophysiology of cardiopulmonary bypass. As we know, all the volume of the uh, body is exposed to an artery, artificial surface which is not endothelial surface. So, some or uh, less, uh, quite amount of systemic inflammatory response is uh, going to happen. Uh, the mediators which is responsible for the inflammatory uh, uh, Responses are complement system, monocytes, cytokines, endotoxins, and free radicals. <clears throat> and how to attenuate the inflammatory response? There are some uh, strategies to attenuate the inflammatory response like hypothermia. The mediators release, uh, they are temporary, uh, temperature sensitive, so hypothermia will attenuate the response of uh, systemic inflammatory response. And surface coating with heparin, that is also helpful in attenuation of the response. And all, of course, ultra filtration and leukocyte filtration, they are the modalities to prevent uh, systemic inflammatory response. And some pharmacological uh, strategies are also, also available for uh, re attenuation of inflammatory response, like steroids, uh, protease inhibitor like aprotinin, antifibrinolytic like uh, tranexamic acid, and antioxidants like tocopherol and allopurinol. As we know, during cardiopulmonary bypass, we must have to take care of vi some vital organs like uh, brain, kidney, lungs and some amount of embolic or hypoperfusion 
will lead to focal ischemia or global ischemia or that will lead to cerebral dysfunction or sometimes cognitive dysfunction in 83% of patients. So we must take care of these vital organs. And how can we take care of these uh, vital organs? We can protect cerebellum, uh, we can protect CNS uh, with a mild uh, degree of hypothermia. Some pharmacological, pharmacological agents are also available like uh, barbiturates that will shift the oxyhemoglobin cloud to the uh, cow to the right so uh, in that way we can uh, save the uh, central nervous system and of course lower the hematocrit will better perfuse organs so uh, hemodilution is also helpful in cerebral protection another run, uh, pro uh, important organ is lung as we know on pump on cardiopulmonary bypass there is a uh, ventilation is off so lung will be collapsed <clears throat> and it will be raised on the left, uh, left, lower lobe of the uh, left lung. So there will be development of atelectasis. Of course, surfactant production will be uh, less. So it, it will ultimately it will develop atelectasis and ventilation perfusion mismatch. And how can we overcome these problems? So during cardiopulmonary bypass, we can do static inflation of lungs and intermittent sigh we can apply. Uh, and of course avoid opening of the pleural cavity this will be very, very much important and uh, apply psi before winning of the cardiopulmonary bypass and after uh, cardiopulmonary bypass uh, apply peep to the ventilation around 5 to 6 peep that will be helpful in prevention of atelectasis other important organ is kidney in 25 to 75 percent decrease in renal blood flow on pump so we must have to take care of the uh, this vital organ uh, etiologies are non pulsatile non pulsatility of the flow immune injury increase in catecholamines and of course some patient factors like advanced age uh, peripheral artery disease congestive heart failure chronic diabetes and reduced surgeries these all the factor we can uh, that, that can lead to uh, acute renal failure and how we can protect the this vital organ we can do hemodilution for better uh, peripheral perfusion, hypothermia, pulsatile perfusion, membrane oxygenator uh, that will uh, filtrate the inflammatory mediators and of course dopamine and clonidine that will dilate the renal vessels and improve uh, blood flow. In all, uh, in all operated cases, renal function, uh, renal dysfunction will occur in, may occur in 3 to 29 percent of cases and dialysis may re, uh, need to 1 to 5 percent and mortality Rate is 27 to 89 percent if uh, patient goes to uh, acute kidney injury. Of course, we can we have to take care of some important uh, minerals like calcium, magnesium, and uh, potassium. These minerals we during cardiopulmonary bypass uh, the dilution of these calcium, magnesium, and potassium occurs. So uh, these these minerals are very very important in maintenance of sinus rhythm as well as coagulation factor maintenance. So we have to take care of these uh, uh, vital elements and we have to supplement according to our laboratory data. Now we discuss in brief about cardiopulmonary bypass equipments, which are the equipments that are used in uh, cardiopulmonary bypass. The fun basic function of cardiopulmonary bypass is oxygenation and elimination of CO2 and circulation of blood, systemic and cooling and rewarming of the patient and diversion of blood from the heart. <coughs> This is the basic diagram of the cardiopulmonary bypass circuit. As you can see in the diagram, that the patient's blood it is drained from right atrium, and it is collected in the reservoir. We can see blue color reservoir. It it will function as the reservoir of the blood, as we have overhead tank of the water at our houses. So uh, th this is basically reservoir for blood, and with the help of pump, this blood will be oxygenated, and with the help of filter. This oxygenated blood will be uh, given back to the patient with the help of arterial cannula to the ascending aorta. So this is the basic circuit of the cardiopulmonary bypass machine. It is shown in the diagram. Uh, this is a shown diagrammatic presentation of the same circuit. And these are the components of cardiopulmonary bypass circuits. Uh, components are venous cannula, reservoir, pump, heat exchanger, oxygenator, arterial filter, aortic cannula, ancillary, vent, cardiotomy suction, gas blender, safety devices and monitoring devices. These are the, uh, we will discuss in brief about all the components. Venous reservoir, 
two types of reverse reservoirs are available one is hard shell and second is soft shell reservoir uh, hard shell reservoir are used uh, nowadays we are using uh, commonly soft shell reservoir are not used the hard shell reservoir is open to atmosphere but there is risk of air embolism is there and venti uh, vacuum assisted venous drainage is possible in hard shell reservoir but is not possible in soft shell reservoir soft shell reservoir is collapsible and uh, decrease the risk of air embolism but uh, not used nowadays in four types of pump pumps basic function of the pump is to move forward uh, for, to proceed the forward flow of blood in the body <coughs> so four types of pump roller pump centrifugal pump pulsatile pump and non occlusive roller pump but in practical uh, in practice on, only two types of pumps are used nowadays roller pump as well as centrifugal pump you can see the diagram as well as photograph the of roller pump in right upper quadrant <coughs> this is the diagram of roller pump you can see the raceway cow raceway there is metal cow raceway here and tubing is fixed in this raceway and in middle there is a shaft and at the 180 degree apart two hands are fixed at 180 degree apart and at the end of this and there is a fixation of roller is uh, made so at the all time one roller is always compressing the tube so uh, forward flow of, uh, of blood is possible so uh, on that way the uh, roller pump is functioning and this is the photograph real photograph of uh, roller pump the roller pump is positive display, uh, displacement pump and it is most commonly used it is independent of preload as well as afterload so we can uh, give the flow as per patient's requirement as per patient uh, requirement and uh, clinical use so it is uh, independent of preload as well as afterload but problem with this roller pumps are malocclusion miss uh, calibration tubing fracture runaway pump and spallation and of course sometime air uh, air pumping centrifugal pumps these pumps are made up of plastic cones which are housing in the plastic uh, shell so when it is moved around when it is uh, run at the rate of 2000 to 3000 rpm it will create negative pressure it will create the pressure difference so blood can move forward uh, in the patient and it is of course it is depend on magnetically uh, magnetically driven and it is also expensive this centrifugal pumps is preload as well as afterload dependent so if patient is having a high peripheral uh, vascular resistance it, it will be difficult to manage uh, adequate flow it is of course it is uh, expensive and it is uh, mainly used in uh, ecmo advantages of centrifugal pumps are it, is, it has less blood trauma do not over pressurize no tubing wear no spallation no cavitation but these advantages are lack of versatility in placement no vent can apply we cannot apply uh, vent or suction in the centrifugal pumps and not pulsatile no pulsatile flow can be given to the patient and retrograde flow uh, retrograde flow sometimes uh, if patient is having very uh, very much uh, very high peripheral vascular resistance oxygen oxygenators mainly two types of oxygenator in practical use one is bubble oxygenator and second is membrane oxygenator but bubble oxygenator are uh, not used nowadays it was used before uh, many uh, many years the basic principle of bubble oxygenator is blood is drained into a chamber and oxygen is, oxygen oxygen is diffused into that so that deoxygenated blood will get oxygenated and then oxygenated blood is given to the patient but main problem of this bubble oxygenator is air embolism so uh, and difficult to assemble huge in size so it is not uh, used nowadays at present in practical use we are using membrane oxygenator it is shown in the photograph it imitates natural lung and gas exchange occurs across the thin membrane membrane is made up of polypropylene membrane and two types of uh, membrane oxygenator available in the market mono uh, microporous and non porous uh, non porous practically we are using uh, this type of uh, oxygenator nowadays this is a photograph uh, right side photograph shows membrane oxygenator structure of the membrane oxygenator you can see the fresh gas flow in and out 
blood in and outlet uh, in this photograph. Better oxygenation occurs with the help of membrane oxygenator. Other most important uh, instrument is venous cannula and its drainage. So according, the, according to patient's age and uh, weight, we have to choose the proper venous cannula. This is available in 10 to 6, 46 French in uh, single stage and 36 to 51 French for two stage uh, cannulation. And flow, one third flow comes from supervenous cava and two third flow will come from the inferior vena cava of the patient. <clears throat> we can cannulate the bicaval, coatrial, single atrial, peripheral cannulation or gravity dependent. Uh, this all uh, venous cannula will uh, drain uh, blood uh, according to gravity. Arterial cannula, right side is the photograph of the arterial cannula. You can see the tip, many arterial cannula has metal tip, some has uh, uh, straight tip and curved tip. So this is the narrowest part of the CPB circuit is the arterial cannula and it creates high flow jet. But we have to keep in mind that during management of CPB, the pressure gradient according, uh, at the age of at the tip of the arterial cannula should not be more than 100 millimeter of mercury. Sometimes femoral cannulation is also required in some patients like reduced surgeries, aortic surgery, minimal uh, SS surgery and severe atherosclerotic patients, we cannot uh, cannulate ascending aorta directly. Other important structure is tubing in CPB pump. The tubing, characteristics of tubing are, it should be transparent, resilient, flexible, non-kinking, non wettable and heat tolerance. These are the characteristics of tubing. So we have to keep in mind that characteristics of the tubing. Tubing are made up of latex rubber, PVC, silicone rubber, but at present we are using medical grade PVC. This is the best quality of uh, 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 tubings, which is made up of medical grade PVC. <coughs> this is other important uh, machines uh, or of CPB circuit that is heat exchanger. We can with the help of this machine, we can warm or cool the patients according to surgery or according to need of the patients. And temperature ranges we can manage from 4 degree to 42 degree centigrade. And it is placed at proximal to the oxygenator. These are the filters. The function of the filters are to remove excess water as well as to remove inflammatory mediators. This is also an important part of the CPP circuit. <coughs> and of course, Without monitoring, uh, CPB uh, management is uh, uh, lacking. So monitoring is very, very important. Uh, monitoring like inline blood gas, venous oximetry, line pressure, pre-membrane as well as post-membrane pressure recording, arterial blood flow uh, meter is uh, placed in the machine, and temperature uh, monitoring, expired gas monitoring. These are the basic parameters that we have to monitor while management of the cardiopulmonary pump. Now, how Will uh, how we can conduct the uh, cardiopulmonary bypass machine? The conduct of CPB before conduction of, uh, before the management of cardiopulmonary bypass machine. These are the checklist for the management like circuit assembly, priming, heparinization, cannulation, CPB initiation, venting, cooling, winning, and decannulation and post CPB uh, observation or post CPB management. Circuit is the empty so we have to prime solution in circuits and uh, with the help of balanced salt solution we are priming uh, the circuit and additives we, uh, we can add it, we can add into the circuit in, uh, add into the priming solution and it is recirculate for, uh, recirculated for the dearing purpose so uh, which are the balanced salt solution that uh, for example ringer lactate or uh, plasma light air these are the balanced salt solution that we are using for priming uh, purpose and other a substance are sodium bicarbonate that will act as a buffer, mannitol which helps in osmotic diuresis as well as edema reduction, heparin for the purpose of anticoagulation and if patient is having low hematocrit then we would uh, we add uh, a blood for uh, priming solution. And if needed patient is having low drainage, low venous drainage we can apply venous 
वैक्यूम असिस्टेड वेनस ड्रेनेज जनरली फिफ्टीन हंड्रेड एम एल फॉर एडल्ट सिक्स फिफ्टी एम एल फॉर पीडियाट्रिक एंड थ्री फिफ्टी एम एल ऑफ प्राइमिंग सोल्यूशन आर एडेड इन न्यू नेट्स एंड वाई हिमो डायल्यूशन इज नेसेसरी फॉर मैनेजमेंट ऑफ सी पी बी बिकॉज इट ऑप्सेट्स हाइपोथर्मिया इंड्यूज इंक्रीज इन विस्कोसिटी सो बेटर पेरीफेरल वास्कुलर सर्कुलेशन विल बी मैनेज बेटर पेरीफेरल परफ्यूजन विल बी मैनेज एंड मेंटेनेंस ऑफ माइक्रो सर्कुलेटरी फ्लो रिड्यूज द नीड ऑफ ब्लड बैंक बिकॉज इफ वी नो वी डोंट एड दिस बैलेंस ऑल सोल्यूशन टू द प्राइमिंग देन वी वी हैव टू एड द ब्लड सो इन स्पाइट ऑफ ब्लड वी आर एडिंग दिस सोल्यूशन सो अल्टीमेटली देर विल बी डिक्रीज द लोड ऑन ब्लड बैंक and optimize cerebral perfusion as well as reduce the micro embolism uh, micro embolism you can see there is the equation that we can predict hematocrit uh, hematocrit during cpb how much will be the hematocrit of patient on cpb we can calculate uh, with the help of this formula <coughs> and of course hemodial uh, hemodilution is uh, not without adverse effect it also has some adverse effects like decrease concentration of coagulation vital nutrients and uh, of course it will develop intra or extra cellular fluid accumulation and immunosuppression as well as redistribution of coronary blood flow and how much heparin should we add to the patient on cpb management generally 300 to 400 international unit of uh, heparin given iv and act check act after 3 to 5 minutes act should be more than 480 seconds and if not achieved then we can repeat heparin and on pump 2 to 3 unit of heparin is added to the priming solution and monitor act every 30 second or uh, 30 minutes this is a uh, act machine if patient is having a patient is sensitive sensitive or resistant to the heparin then which are the drugs that we can use in place of heparin drugs like low molecular weight heparin heparinoids <coughs> uh, hirudin uh, bivalirudin or platelet inhibitor these are the list of drug that we can use in place of heparin if patient is sensitive or resist to heparin from anesthesia side we have to check act adequate anesthesia level adequate muscle relaxation and all iv ports should be closed should not be open to the atmosphere and nitric oxide if used then it should be disconnected then aortic cannulation aortic cannulation is usually performed first because if there is emergency need of volume emergency need of uh, some uh, supplementation then we can use the aortic cannulation for volume supplementation and while during uh, uh, doing aortic cannulation we should uh, lower the pressure systolic pressure up to 90 or 100 mm of mercury we should take care of uh, while doing aortic cannulation because aortic cannulation sometime may lead to lethal uh, little hazards like uh, back wall injury dissection arch wall cannulation air embolism or intramural placement of aortic cannulation so we must take care of uh, take care while doing aortic cannulation <coughs> venous cannula venous cannula available in uh, wire reinforced manner it is flexible it is uh, used as in bicuvel as well as uh, single stage cannulation but precaution to be taken during venous cannulation is uh, also as important as aortic cannulation because it may lead to arrhythmia bleeding ivc or svc tear or cannula malposition if uh, we are not getting enough uh, bl- blood volume from the patient then we have to uh, find some causes like inadequate height of the patient then malposition of the venous cannula it is if it is king or not Uh, if patient is hypovolemic then we have to give some adequate volume and if patient is constricted then we have to give some uh, veno dilator now all the things are ready patient is uh, aortic as well as venous cannulation is cannulation is done then uh, we have to re- uh, circulate the circuit for deering purpose all the lines will be divided and verify absence of the bubbles and stamp uh, start pump before releasing venous clamp and this is the list of pre bypass check list before going on bypass we have to check all the tubings connected to d ad it is all monitors are working act is more than 480 seconds and pulsative pulsatile waveform should be on aortic cannula from aortic cannula 
some variables like systemic vascular resistance, peripheral vascular resistance, organ function, PO2, CVP, hematocrit, this is the variable that affect uh, CPB uh, drainage. So we have to modify it according to patient's need and uh, require blood, required blood flow. The, these are the monitoring like CVP, perfusion pressure, temperature, ECG and of course you have bispectral index or NIRs then it is very very important in some uh, surgeries. Of course uh, check for flow, reservoir volume, line pressure and bubbles. According to patient's weight, height and body mass index the flow requirement is different to according to different different old patients. But Generally, flow is 2.2 to 2.4 liter per minute per meter square. This is the standard formula. And maintain uh, mean arterial pressure about 60 to 65 millimeter of mercury while management of cardiopulmonary bypass machine. And maintain pressure of pump flow uh, if uh, needed. Then vasoactive uh, drugs we can use or we can use SNP or NTG according to patient's need or, uh, and uh, peripheral vascular resistance. There is some difference of pressure in radial as well as femoral artery of about 20 to 30 millimeter of mercury and there are subgroup of patients that uh, the patients need very high some some amount of high mean arterial pressure like uh, severe atherosclerotic patient advanced age hypertension or diabetic these are the patient though who required higher, perf uh, higher perfusion pressure and cardioplasia cardioplasia is other important part of the management of cardiopulmonary bypass machine. It is available in 20 ml of ampule which contains procaine hydrochloride, potassium chloride and magnesium chloride. In spite of these uh, three elements, procaine as well as magnesium chloride will help in uh, stem membrane stabilization and will help in ischemic to reduce ischemic insult and potassium chloride is will helpful in diastolic arrest of the heart. This 20 ml Ampule is diluted in 1 ml of uh, 1 liter of blood and it is given according to patient's height and requirement. The standard dose is 20 ml per kilogram and flow is 150 mil ml per meter square per minute. If we are giving anti-grade cardioplegia, the pressure should be 150 to 200 millimeter of mercury. If we are giving from left ostia, it should be 100 to 120 millimeter of mercury. If we are giving from right ostia, it should be 90 to 100 millimeter of mercury and if we are giving retrograde cardioplegia then pressure must be not exceeded to 40 to 50 millimeter of mercury. Some group of patient uh, that required mild, moderate or deep state of hypothermia because uh, hypothermia will provide a safety margin, it will decrease metabolic rate as well as oxygen consumption and it will preserve high energy phosphates. So, some group of patients like uh, arch of aorta surgery that will require uh, deep hypothermia or uh, moderate hypothermia. So, according to patient's requirement as well as uh, type of surgery, we are managing the patient's uh, temperature. <coughs> These are the benefits of hypothermia like low, it will lower pump flow, so better myocardial protection, so less blood trauma and better organ protection. But hypothermia is also with have some adverse effects like it will increase blood viscosity and it will shift the oxyhemoglobin cow to the left so oxygen delivery will be less and of course platelet dysfunction, coagulopathy, myocardial depression, dysrhythmia, vasoconstriction and hypocalcemia these are the side effects of uh, hypothermia so we must have to take care of these all uh, problems. Ultra filtration is other important act that we have to do sometime uh, while managing cardiopulmonary bypass. This ultra filtration will remove excess water as well as it will remove uh, some inflammatory mediators. So, uh, other way he will, it will help in hemo management of maintenance of hemo concentration. It will increase colored osmotic pressure and it will decrease extra vascular fluid. <clears throat> now, uh, after all this act, we need to wean the patient from the CPB pump. The goal is to smooth transition from the CPB to the heart. Before winning from the CPB, we must have to optimize the lab, some factors like preload, afterload, heart rate, contraction, contraction from uh, if uh, by direct visualization or if you have transesophageal or 
echocardiography, then we can visualize on uh, screen. Uh, check patient is having sinus rhythm or not. If not, then we can apply uh, pacemaker. Hematocrit should be more than uh, 30, de uh, 30 and patient's temperature should be uh, around 36, 36.5 degrees centigrade. Uh, after checking all the parameters, then we can uh, wean the patient from cardiopulmonary bypass pump. And of course, lungs should be expanded adequately. And gradually, uh, we, we should retard the pump flow and wean the patient from the pump. And after doing all this uh, act, after winning of the uh, winning the patient from the cardiopulmonary bypass pump, the need to do neutralization of heparin with the help of protamin. So, one milligram of uh, protamin is required for 100 unit of heparin neutralization. But we must have to take care while giving protamin because some patient may have uh, se uh, serious adverse effects. So, we, we should give in small uh, di diluted dose as well as over a period of time of 15 to 20 minutes. In uh, some institute, they give protamin through arterial line also. So, we must take, uh, we must be alert while doing protamin. After giving protamin, check for the post CPB coagulopathy. The causes are dilutional, uh, dilutional closes. Uh, thrombocytopenia, platelet dysfunction, hypofibrinogenemia, heparin and wall villobran factor deficiency. So always check for the CPB related coagulopathy uh, after uh, coming off the bypass. If uh, post CPB coagulopathy is developed, then uh, there are some component therapy as available. We can always uh, use that like uh, platelet uh, fresh frozen plasma, cryoprecipitate, antifibrinolytics or tranexamic acid. Uh, we can take help of that and manage post TPB coagulopathy. Of course, we need to check for the microembolization of air as well as uh, wax or some debris, fat. So always check for the embolization. Always uh, close the all ports of uh, central line as well as peripheral line. Uh, ports will be closed. After checking all the ports and uh, taking Take care, taken care of this embolization, uh, neutralization of heparin, patient is off pump and uh, of course uh, we have checked the post, co um, post TPB coagulation and the patient is uh, ready for the shifting to the ICU. So thank you very much. Thank you.